So, a lot of people have heard the idea that an atom is mostly empty space. Some people have even heard the idea that reality is projected from consciousness as opposed to us taking it in. But it's interesting when you look at the experiments and the science behind where they came to that conclusion. The best way to look at that is the double slit experiment, which is connected to the measurement problem. In an attempt to figure out what matter and really what reality is in general, scientists built what is called an electron gun, which I am not going to go into here. I do not have the background or smarts to do so. But the idea was to fire an electron, which was the smallest particle of matter at the time, at a surface with two holes slit, then a screen on the back to collect the atoms or electrons that had passed through. So you see here we got the uh, electron gun, fires the electrons into the surface. Some of them just hit the surface and they stick to that, but of course some of them pass through the two slits and then those would stick to the wall behind it. And they were expecting, as any of us would, that the particles that pass through the slits would stick to the wall behind it in the same format or layout as the slits are. However, that's not what happened at all. What did happen was what is called an interference pattern, which resembles what would happen when waves intersect. The best way to th think about that is to look at uh, water or sound, or anything that is not actual uh, particle matter. So what they came to a conclusion of is that uh, atoms don't behave like we would suspect them to logically. You know, uh, here's a picture of an interference pattern in water. So they wanted to see what was going on inside here to cause this anomaly. The best way to get in there is to put an observer inside the experiment, sort of an eye. This way, instead of just collecting the results at the end of the experiment, they could watch the experiment take place. So once the eye was, or the censoring device was in the experiment, they fired the electrons again, expecting to watch the interference pattern take place. But that's not what happened. What happened was, we got the classical result we were expecting in the first place. The electrons behaved themselves as if they were particles. Whenever an observer was there, the electrons were matter. And whenever the observer was not there, they did not behave themselves as matter. They behaved as waves or as uh, not as particles, but as waves. So before observation, the waves are spread out over space and time. There's basically a probability factor of where they land. It's a, a superposition, a case of matter being in two places at once and not existing at all at the same time. But at the time of observation, the particle is localized where we would expect it to be behaving itself. What inspired such shock about this experiment is that it seemed to implicate that matter, the world, doesn't exist until you look at it. It doesn't, some, you can't have something unless there's consciousness first. And this blew up, this experiment has been done over and over and over again throughout the decades, trying to recreate the results, trying to find some kind of fluke. This inspired a kind of newish folk saying, which is that if you want to see fear in the eyes of a quantum physicist, just mention the words measurement problem. Now, the first time this experiment was done in 1909, when Albert Einstein got wind of it, he said, quote, the moon doesn't just disappear when you're not looking at it. And he rushed down there to fix it, to figure out what they did wrong and to put everything back into sanity again. However, this isn't what happened. He went down there and he confirmed the, uh, the results, uh, inspiring Albert Einstein to say such quotes as, uh, reality is an illusion, although it being a very convincing one. A great quote to illustrate that, if quantum mechanics hasn't profoundly shocked you, you haven't understood it yet. So this whole 
idea of nothing is real is not only startling, but it's it's enough to get anybody's brain boiling over, you know, thoughts of the, the matrix or consciousness being entangled with reality or the idea that we are in some sort of dream like the ancient mystics used to conceptualize or the uh, the Taoist. It's important to mention that the scientific status quo does not like that. They don't like anything that surpasses hard evidence, although this is, is basically speculation from that point out. They consider these things to be woo-woo, inspiring scientists to come up with what they call the uh, many worlds theory, or as most people are familiar with the name, uh, multiple universes, uh, basically stating that these probabilities of where these electrons land is basically every moment the universe is splitting off into separate entities and there's an infinite amount of these realities. I don't, as naive as I am, I feel like that explanation is just as wacky as the idea of consciousness projecting reality. Now. Uh, that's enough right there to be extremely weird. But, and I could stop the video there and it would be absolutely as strange as possible. But this is where it gets extremely weird, extremely mind boggling. And I'm gonna try to illustrate this the best I can, but it is gonna be fairly difficult, so bear with me. Because not being satisfied with those results, of course, we wanted to test this experiment using quantum entanglement as a basis of the experiment where basically two electrons are the same electron. They, it's actually one electron existing in two places at once. And they wanted to do this thing called the delayed choice experiment. It is the double slit experiment the way that we just illustrated, but they changed something about the experiment while the electrons are in motion. So let's say instead of having an eye within the experiment, they put the eye in the experiment after the electrons have passed through the double slit. So we have no observer in the experiment and the electrons are cast from the electron gun. As the electrons pass through the double slit, boom, they turn on the eye, the sensor, so there's an observer. And then as soon as they turn on the eye, those photons, those, uh, those electrons seem to switch from a wave to a particle again. So let's say there's no observer, the electrons pass through the double slit, they pass through both double slits and neither at the same time. One electron passes through both slits and neither at the same time. This is the wave that we got with the first experiment. After the waves have passed through the double slit and the eye is turned on, they behave like particles again, having passed through one slit or the other, indicating that as weird as it sounds, according to our classical understanding of it, they had time traveled. They had moved backwards in time and chose a slit to go through once the observer had taken place. To kind of summarize that, the electrons chose which slit to go through after they already passed through them as a wave. The observer caused the electrons to seem to time travel and make the decision then. Or they had made the decision all along since the beginning of their own format. Wheeler pointed out that when these assumptions are applied to a device of interstellar dimensions, a last minute decision made on Earth on how to observe a photon could alter a decision made millions or billions of years ago. These photons seem to act based on our decisions before we make the decisions. So the idea of time not being real is enough for a whole nother video that I'm not ready for at this point anyway. But I think it's worth noting because it pertains to this delayed choice experiment that 
perhaps time is a biological construct of being human. You know, what causes time in the first place is having two objects and one of the objects moves because one relative to the other is what causes time to exist in the first place, making it entangled with space, hence Einstein's relativity. I think that the biology of being a human being and sensing reality through the five senses is what causes time to seem linear in the first place. And we're seeing here that subatomic particles, electrons, photons, these things that make up matter in the first place don't give a fuck about time. They seem to live in this unified field. You can look at this stuff yourself just as easily as Googling the double slit experiment, the measurement problem, and the delayed choice experiment. Uh, there's really no secret here. There's really not a conspiracy at play. There's no cover-ups. It's just a, a giant mystery.